we're going to review the oxidation of alcohols. So just as a review, oxidation and reduction, there's lots of different definitions that you can use for those two terms. We're going to go with the simplest one we can get away with in this course, and that is this. Anytime you are talking about oxidation, in an oxidation reaction, the number of carbon-oxygen bonds would increase, or the number of carbon-hydrogen bonds would decrease. If either of those two or both are occurring in your reaction, you have an oxidation reaction. Reduction is always the opposite of oxidation. So in a reduction reaction, the carbon-oxygen bonds would go down. You would get rid of carbon-oxygen bonds or the carbon-hydrogen bonds would go up. Again, if either of those are occurring or both of them, you have a reduction reaction. So if we look at our alcohol right here, here's my generic alcohol right here. This is just the generic symbol for an oxidizing agent. We'll give you some example of those in a minute. But here's my alcohol. If it reacts or has an oxidizing agent present, what's going to happen here is these two hydrogens are going to be eliminated from the molecule. This is an elimination reaction where we're taking something away from that molecule. So if I take those hydrogens away, I still have that oxygen there and then whatever is left on that carbon there. But if I look at my carbon here now, it's missing that hydrogen, so it's only making three bonds. It wants to make another one. This oxygen is missing the hydrogen, so it wants to make another bond as well. So there is where my other bond is going to come in, just like that. So I'm going to make a carbonyl or a carbon-oxygen double bond as my product there. And of course, those hydrogens are still hanging around there um, that were eliminated from my molecule. Now, this can be classified as an oxidation reaction because two reasons here. One, I've gotten rid of some carbon-hydrogen bonds. This carbon-hydrogen bond is no longer there. I also have increased the number of carbon-oxygen bonds. I had a carbon-oxygen single bond, and now I have a carbon-oxygen double bond. So that is clearly an oxidation reaction. Let's look at a real example here. Here's my ethanol right here. Ethanol is my alcohol. There's my hydroxide group. Ethanol is classified as a primary alcohol right there because this carbon right here next to my hydroxide group is only bonded to one other carbon. This right here is potassium dichromate. That is a mild oxidizing agent. So what's going to happen here is my hydrogen on my hydroxide group and one of these hydrogens on the next carbon are going to come together and be eliminated from my molecule there. That's going to leave this carbon needing to make a bond and this oxygen needing to make a bond. So let's see what my product's going to look like. There's my CH3. This carbon right here, it had two hydrogens. Now it just has one. So it'll still be a CH. And then it is also bonded to an oxygen. I'm going to put that oxygen up on the top this time. You could put it off to the side, but I just want to show that it's very clearly bonded to my carbon and not on my hydrogen like that. And remember what's going to happen. That carbon is bonded to the oxygen, and now it is going to have a double bond just like that. This product now what we just made is an aldehyde. It has a carbon-oxygen double bond with a hydrogen on that carbon. If you have a primary alcohol, you are always going to get an aldehyde as your product right now, there. Now, when you do produce an aldehyde, something continues to happen because aldehydes are also easily oxidized. So if you do produce an aldehyde, which you will with a primary alcohol, there is still that oxidizing agent. It is still hanging around there, so it is going to continue to oxidize this aldehyde. Now, when an aldehyde is oxidized, what happens is essentially a oxygen is added right here. It kind of slips in there with that hydrogen right there, and you get this molecule right here. This molecule right here 
is called a carboxylic acid, which is a functional group that we will cover um, in the next week or two. So that's what's going to happen if you oxidize a primary alcohol. You'll get an aldehyde and then it will continue to oxidize to a carboxylic acid. Now what happens if we have a secondary alcohol right here? Here's my secondary alcohol right here. This time the hydroxide group is bonded to a carbon and this carbon is bonded to two carbons, which makes that a secondary alcohol like that. Here is my mild oxidizing agent. This is potassium permanganate right here. In this case, here's my hydrogens. One's going to come from my hydroxide group, and the other hydrogen always comes from the carbon that's attached to the hydroxide group. So just like that, those are going to come together to make my hydrogen that's eliminated from my molecule, which makes that carbon then needing to make a double bond, just like that, to the oxygen. I still have the two methyl groups on both sides, so there's my product of that. Um, oxidation reaction. This right here is a ketone. I have my carbon oxygen double bond, but then I have an alkyl group on both sides, not a hydrogen like I did with the aldehyde. Ketones are done at that point. They do not further oxidize, so that reaction at that point is done. This one right here is a tertiary alcohol. Here's my hydroxide group. The carbon it's bonded to is bonded to three other carbons right here. This right here is chromic acid. That's a mild oxidizing agent. So if I try to do a, an oxidation reaction, I'm looking for hydrogens. There's the hydrogen on my hydroxide group. If you look back at the other two we looked at, it always combines with a hydrogen on the carbon that it's attached to. Well, in a tertiary alcohol, there is no hydrogen here. So it cannot eliminate an H2 because there's no hydrogen on that carbon, which means you're not going to get a reaction here. Tertiary alcohols do not undergo oxidation reactions. Only the primary and the secondary alcohols do.